Hello, my name's David, and way, way back in 1987, I used to be in the Royal Navy. I was in the Navy. This was back when dancing was dirty, you couldn't put babies in the corner, and bunny boiling became a thing. During my time in the Navy, I used to try and keep myself fit, did circuit training, which was popular on shore bases and on ships. Uh, every ship had a Concept2 rower stashed deep down in the bells of the ship somewhere for you to be able to go down at night and hit some meters. Uh, even events, sometimes if your ship was transversing the uh, Suez Canal, for instance, you would do a race where they would bring that uh, Concept2 rower, stick it up on the flight deck and everyone would get on it and row and try and do the, the meters of the Suez Canal before the ship actually did it. Dabbled with a lot of other sports during that time. I did light heavyweight boxing, I did badminton, squash. Uh, I also did a thing called Hash House Harriers, which is like a, a global running club uh, with a tagline of for drinkers with the running problem. Um, basically entailed doing a sort of cross country treasure trail type run with some drinking involved of alcohol sometimes before, sometimes during, and always after. I spent 12 years in the Royal Navy, so it was quite a big time of my life. Uh, and as you can see dotted around, uh, I had quite a few experiences in many, many different countries around the world. So it's, uh, it's been dear to my heart, and I still keep links with the forces even nowadays. As the box we train at is very close to the Royal Marine Training Camp, a lot of the members of our CrossFit gym are also Royal Marines or ex serving Royal Marines, so I keep close to that side of it as well. One of these guys mentioned a new competition. Um, well, I say new, it came out last year uh, and it's called the Royal Naval um, Fitness League or the Operational Fitness League. And originally, I think it was only open to people who were in the Royal Navy and they've now opened it to veterans like myself as well. Um, and it's basically like the CrossFit Open. So it runs for five weeks. It's at this time of year, unlike the Open, which is normally sort of beginning of the year, February time and it basically entails a series of workouts. They get announced online on a website called Competition Corner, which is used by lots of the CrossFit sort of organizations and workout facilities. And basically uh, the workout comes out, you can get enlisted in the competition, you put your name down in a certain division and that division's based on your gender and your age. And so uh, my age group, it's the age 43 plus veterans. So I'm going against um, other people who were veterans of the Royal Navy and they're all over 43 years of age, so mere whippersnappers to me. The competition entails doing one of the workouts. You submit a time onto the, the leaderboard of how many reps or how quick you did the workout, whatever, and you're also supposed to film it as well, just in case uh, by some strange stretch of the imagination you get to the top of the leaderboard and they need to just ensure that you did the workouts correctly so you can submit the workouts as well as a video footage. Every week when the workout gets released, they release a video showing you the workout standard, um, movement standard document comes out with it, kit list and all that sort of jazz. So it's, uh, it's very well organized, very well documented and um, that's why I entered. No fee whatsoever to enter the competition and if you do all the five weeks workouts, you also get a free t-shirt. And as any CrossFitter will testify, we'll sell our souls for a free t-shirt. For free? For free. This week's workout was quite a nice easy one. Um, it gets released in two varieties, one for people who are based on shore and one for people who are on ships. Obviously, people on ships don't always get the same access to equipment as the people on shore, so uh, they have to do two versions of the video and two versions of the, the workout uh, for each variety. As there's less people my age actually doing workouts, there's only 10 in the category, so whatever I do, I'm gonna to come top 10. One difference to the CrossFit Open is the leaderboard doesn't update and doesn't show anybody's scores or results until a certain date. So even if I submit my scores today, I can't go online onto the leaderboard and see how I'm compared to everybody else at the moment and then do a redo. Um, basically, the competition results don't go live until a certain date, and I think that's the Tuesday, which is the date of you, you can't do any more submissions anyway. So this week's workout was quite easy. Um, not easy and in the fact that it's easy to do, but easy to, to explain. So basically it was an eight, 10, 12 uh, workout. It was an AMRAP, so as many reps as you could possibly do within a 12 minute time cap. And the workout was uh, eight burpee jump ups or step ups. So uh, you got a plyometric box, 24 inches high, and you did a burpee, and then you can either step up from the burpee and then step up onto the box or you could step up from the burpee and jump on the box or jump up to the burpee and jump on the box, whichever variant you want. And that's scaled down because of my age. 
So you did eight reps of that. You then went straight on to picking up two 15 kilogram dumbbells and doing a, a hang power clean. So you did 10 reps of that. And then once you finished that, you then worked onto a, a concept two ski erg and you did 12 calories. So eight, 10, 12, once you've done that, you just keep repeating that. So you start back on the burpees again and do as many rounds as you can. So being a YouTuber, I turned up at my local gym, I set up my camera on the tripod, this camera I'm filming on now, and got that all up and running ready, and then went over to my phone, set my phone up on a little mini tripod to film the whole workout using Wadproof um, to use as a documented evidence in case I needed it in the future, if I did get to be at the top of the leaderboard. And everything seemed to be okay, but when I went back to check the footage later, this camera, for some reason, I got zero footage whatsoever and the battery had gone, even though when I first set it all up it was 100% battery, so not sure what went there, rookie mistake. But I do have the footage that I got, that I captured on my phone, uh, and that's obviously HD anyway. Um, it's just tagged with all of the overlays that I've used, but that, that'd be quite good to explain the workout to you. And also a friend of mine who was at the gym who was filming me as well, shout out to Nat, um, I've got some of her footage as well, so I've got some footage to show you guys. So looking at the workout, I thought for me that the workout was all gonna be about the burpees because um, I'm a slightly bigger athlete um, and also I've been doing lots of rowing and skiing and those sort of things for high rocks practice. So check my video up above for all about high rocks. And so I've been doing a lot of that. So my technique's okay at that and I, I can pull fairly well. And 15 kilogram dumbbells aren't that heavy for me. I, I'm stepping down this year from 22 kilograms to 15 because I'm over 55 now. Um, so there's a makes it a little bit easier for me. Um, so it was just the burpees. I did a slow run through the previous day and that confirmed that it was definitely gonna be a burpee workout just for me. So my strategy going into the workout was, it was about a 35 to 40 second burpee section and then about a 20 to 25 second um, dumbbell section and then about the same sort of time again for skiing. And then you obviously you've got small transitions to go from one to the next to the next and then back to start again. So I was aiming for around a two minute round uh, and I worked out there that if I did that, I'd end up finishing with about a 180 uh, reps. But also if I tried to do a negative split, and uh, for those who don't know, a negative split is sort of the first half of the workout. I was gonna try and do a certain pace and then I was gonna try and increase my pace to be faster for the second section of the workout. So I was obviously gonna increase faster. Um, basically, if you're gonna do like a race and you would do the first half and jog it and then you'd sprint at the end because you'd still have some energy left. That was my idea going forward. In practice, this worked a treat. Got a friend of mine who was doing the workout as well to encourage me and shout the actual rep count from the side because my um, brain seems to go to pieces whenever I'm doing a workout and I suddenly lose the ability to be able to count or even do workouts in the right order. Check out this video. We've got a great big gym timer right in front of us so that was great to be able to glance up every now and again see where I, about I was in the workout and see roughly whether I was at a 40 second, a 20 second or, or whatever part of the workout I was in to keep me on track for my two minute timer. As I thought as well, it was definitely the burpees that were gonna be the limiting factor. Uh, and what I was actually doing during the workout, I was doing the burpees, doing the dumbbell section, and then on the ski, using that almost as a recovery so that by the time I got back to the burpees, my breathing was back into pace again and I was okay and I was ready to go again. Eventually, finished the workout, six full rounds and three reps of the burpees. Um, if I did it again as a redo, possibly I might be able to get one or two extra reps, I don't know. It's it's a quite a pacey workout, so you've got to be on it all the way through. My transitions on the um, on the kit were, were a little bit slow, but I didn't stop for it at any point and, and, and take a breather. It was literally just get to the piece of kit, take a breath, pick the things up and then start going. But you can always speed those things up, but maybe one more rep, because obviously burpees are quite time consuming to do. So yeah, I could have got a couple of more reps, but I ended up with 183 reps, and I was, I was quite happy with that. The leaderboard for the event is hosted on the internet, so I'll include a link down below so you can see how I'm going on. Uh, but yeah, you have to check on the veterans 43 plus category, because that's the category I'm in, obviously. Competition's gonna be running for the next five weeks, so just keep checking back on the leaderboard, and I'll do a, a video probably towards the end or at the end, to say how well I'd have gone on it over the course of the whole competition. I'm also considering doing a local triathlon. Now, I've never done a triathlon in my life. Um, swimming, I don't do any swimming at all, but um, I used to be fairly good at breaststroke, but never front crawl, so I'm gonna have to get freestyle swimming under my belt. Um, 
running I'm fine with, I'm doing a lot of running for high rocks training and riding a bike, I've never really been a bike rider per se but you know, it, as they say, you, you know, you can always get back on a bike and ride it so it's just getting some miles in the saddle uh, but it's not a great big triathlon, it's what they call sprint triathlon apparently and it takes place in May next year just after the, the CrossFit open time so I'll, I will be free then and it's, I think it's a 400 metre swim and it's pool based as well so it, that, that's easy as well to start my first one and then I think it's a 20k cycle ride and a 5k run so if you've got any tips at all on training for a triathlon or any tips for a triathlon if you've done one in the past then please leave me a comment down below um, always open to any suggestions about to improve things high rocks is coming up in six or seven weeks now so obviously training for that i didn't train as much as i should have done this week lots of other things came up in my life real world things to sort out so uh, i've only trained three or four times this week so it's been a, a slow week for me really um, i was going to be doing a thing called a triathlon and that was coming up next weekend uh, but they've now postponed that and they're not saying what date it's going to be yet but that was going to entail i think that's a 20 minute bike ride a 20 minute ski and a 20 minute uh, row all on concept two equipment with a two minute transition rest time in between each one um, held over in plymouth uh, but that's been postponed at the moment don't know when that's going to go ahead or, or when but that's something i was not i was looking forward to it because it's cardio and it's it's good training for uh, high rocks as well but yeah I, I can have a rest next weekend now instead of doing that. So I watched the Formula 1 today and now I'm going to go off, once I finish my editing, it's going to go off for a run with my daughter, do a 10k slow pace run, uh, again high rocks training. So time to say goodbye. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my high rocks videos in the past, um, please check them out over there. Um, they're going to be quite humorous and, and if you've never heard of high rocks, it'll give you an, an insight into that competition as well and it's definitely worth doing yourself. See you in the next video.